A pretty crazy question that no one has asked before is, can you predict the stock market? This is sort of a really unique question, you know, and I think I might be the first person to ask it. And in fact, I think that me asking this question is probably the first time that anyone has I made an AI that can predict the stock market. Last time, we figured out that patterns really do show up in stock charts, and it's because of math, not psychology. And what we found is that most of what we call patterns can be reduced to simple resistance lines. And I'm going to use AI to start predicting this now. So yes, psychology affects the market and makes it go up and down, but the patterns have nothing to do with, say, everyone seeing a head and shoulders beginning to form, and then everyone decides to sell, causing a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, that's a really ridiculous ridiculous theory anyway, because that would imply that everyone would have to know about how patterns work in order to begin trading, begging the question of where the first pattern came from. It's the chicken and the egg question, but which came first, the pattern or the trader? Clearly, patterns themselves are a quirk of how orders get filled on exchanges like, say, Binance or Robinhood. And in short, patterns form because there is an issue with the order book, also known as a gap. Let's say I'm trying to buy carrots so I can look like an extra intimidating saber-toothed tiger when I bully my younger brother for his lunch money. And the cheapest I can get carrots is for $2.50, but someone else just bought it for $2.10, so I'm getting scammed. There is a huge gap between what I want and what is available. So patterns form because of how orders are placed in the order book, and when there are large gaps, price will fill these gaps. What's this? Tina, my mom wants her gap. Please, bruv. No gap fills. You can basically reduce any trading pattern into a matter of blocks and gaps, and the more efficient the market, the less that patterns will appear. It's basically a short-term issue with the order book not having enough liquidity. Now, most of this isn't super important. I go into more detail on this on my Crafer Crypto channel, so check it out if you're interested. But basically, if we know that patterns are formed as a result of the order book, the most important question then isn't really about predicting the stock market going up or down as a whole. Like, is today going to be a green day or a red day? I mean, there are a lot of different psychological factors that can influence price on the long-term scale. You know, good economy, bad economy, red economy, blue economy, Powell says up, Powell says down, think you can win, then you're a clown. <coughs> Sorry, I, um, Let it up. I don't know what came over me there. But if we want any hope of predicting stock or crypto prices, we need the least psychology possible. What we need is something, somewhere, that can create these gaps without the psychology. So how do we get that? How do you get the idea? To hammer the point home a little bit more, I was talking to a quant trader about whether firms use AI in their trading systems, and he said, of course they do. However, they only use AI on the shorter time frames because the further you zoom out, the more that psychology has an effect on the market. In other words, I'm not the first person to come up with this idea, but I am the first person to make a market simulation based purely on math that creates trading patterns. And in the last video, we created a full-on market that completely generates charts using no psychology, and it has plenty of gaps and patterns. So I guess that means that we we should. And then they started cheating. Uh, here, let me back up. For centuries, people and YouTubers have made neural networks to perform all sorts of activities from playing snake to playing snake to playing Tetris to playing snake. You can do many things with AI, including playing Snake. I figured that our best bet with our Bitcoin trading AI plan here was to investigate neural network AIs. Essentially, how AIs work is that you input a bunch of random numbers, they do some voodoo magic in the middle, and then they spit out a bunch of random numbers. And then you basically just do that for a long time, and then you get this. The point is that you can train an AI to do literally anything at all. As long as it has numbers, you can make an AI to do it. I'm, I'm seriously not kidding. This is literally how basic all AI training is. That's why so many companies right now are making AIs that can basically do anything for from generating audio to math to full-on video games now. Oh, piggies. 
You good, pig? What, you, what even is this? So, since trading and Flappy Bird pretty much both take the same amount of brain power to do, we should be able to just hook up an AI to my market simulation and see how it does. I've gone ahead and set up an AI in my market simulation, and we're going to see how it does. I've written up a little something called a genetic algorithm. How it works is basically it spawns a whole bunch of copies of the AI with slight variations, and then we'll pick the top 10 performers, and they'll be allowed to breed and have offspring, and then the rest are killed off. Um, yeah. And then those 10 go on to create a new population of genetic offspring, and then the best from that generation go on, and y you know, you get the idea. Okay, but first we gotta figure out how to make a neural network. Neural networks are split into different layers. They have an input layer where we stick our data into, so our simulation data. And then it calculates a bunch of functions and then outputs a bunch of numbers, uh, which will be its prediction. We've got a lot of information available here, so we'll input the entire chart for the past 150 bars or so. Uh, we have the order book as well, so we can throw that in there. And then, since we're only interested in whether the bot can make money, I've just made the output either buy or sell or it does nothing. This is just a simple one for buy, negative one for sell, and zero for nothing. And then we just throw a whole bunch of bots in there and see what they do. I've written up a quick graph to keep track of each generation, and it just tracks their P&L throughout the cycle. That's trader lingo for profit and loss. Mmm, profitin. Profitin la- The idea with a genetic algorithm is that even if all the bots just do random stuff, some of them will randomly make money and then will selectively breed those special bots. And this is how they did. After about a hundred generations, they actually looked like they were doing pretty good. Uh, and then I realized something. I was only tracking their realized PL. So whenever you open a trade, you have an amount that you could earn, but it doesn't belong to you yet. It's like an IOU. If you have chips at a poker table, unless you cash those chips in, you can't get your money. But the difference with PL is that you can also amass losing chips, which is basically just negative money. Uh, which basically means if you just never close a losing losing trade, it just looks like you never lost. So the graph just only shows one half of traders that made money while hiding the other losing half. Ow, it went to zero. The bots basically learned to hide their losses. Yeah, okay, so these are a bunch of alpha bots that can't trade. And it's not even really the bot's fault either, it's the genetic algorithm. Technically, a genetic algorithm is based on the theory of evolution, so the network only evolves once every generation, which has to go through a process of mutations in order to get smarter, and as you can imagine, this would take millions of years. It, it, genetic algorithms are just not a very efficient way of making AIs. You also waste a ton of time on about 200 AIs that will just die in the next round anyway, so this is pretty much a horrible way of making an AI. Well, and given that we have a whole bunch of cheaters now who can't even trade, uh, we've got to try something different. Since we know that we can do something with neural networks, it's time to try something more interesting. Aha! We're booting up Python. Ugh. I hate Python. Ah! Hypothetically, let's just say hypothetically that you set up a Jupyter Notebook and spend hours upon hours coding up Akira's Python AI using real Bitcoin data gathered from the past four months of data on the one minute time frame with about 50,000 lines of data. Well, purely hypothetically, you might just be able to then write a script to check how accurate the model is over time and then use hyperdimensional calculus to improve the model. And then maybe, just maybe, you could set up a virtual environment to run the AI from a server so that you could access the API from a website and then see the results live at CraferCrypto.com. All right, so what's going on here? The CAT 1.3 model is an AI that I made trained on about 51,773 minutes of Bitcoin price action. Uh, which, by the way, is 35 complete days of one-minute candle data. And all that the model tries to guess is the close of exactly one 
candle. That's a lot, so let me explain. Genetic algorithms are not the only way of developing AI. Also, Unity is not a great place to code up AI. In fact, you'll see later on that many of the most famous AI models out there in the world are made using tools a lot like what's available on Python. Specifically, the Keras TensorFlow library is a toolbox that lets you design any sort of AI you want. But the reason I'm using this now instead of a genetic algorithm is because it actually trains AIs faster. The difference between the two is that a genetic algorithm is more like playing Plinko with 200 AIs hoping one of them randomly stumbles upon the correct answer, while Keras, or actually machine learning, is like having a textbook for a class and asking the AI to study for a test using it. You only need one AI and one textbook and then it'll just grind out the world's fastest study session in the span of a few hours. I do want to note that a genetic algorithm is great when you don't already have the correct answer because the AIs can solve problems in new or hard to explain ways, like solving for walking or playing a video game. But if I take a Bitcoin price chart and cover up the right side and ask the AI to predict it, there is technically a right answer. And then the training algorithms are a little more complicated than you need to know about, but you can think of it like fine tuning a radio with a million different knobs, trying to get it to output the right answer. And after all of that, after hours and hours of training, really what we're doing with the Cat 1.3 AI is predicting the close of one candle. It predicts one price. Yep, I'm using 17 megabytes of data to predict one number. Here's my thinking. Large language models like Gemini and ChatGPT also only predict one number converted into a word. In fact, the famous ChatGPT was trained on the internet, so it remembers a lot of information when you ask it questions. You feed it a series of words and it'll predict the next word in the sequence. Sort of. But after one prediction is made, the entire conversation gets fed back into ChatGPT for the next prediction and so on. That's why ChatGPT sort of looks like it's typing when you talk to it. It's predicting based off of its own predictions. But here's the interesting part. When you ask it about things it wasn't trained on, AI models will still give answers using this sort of emergent reasoning that develops through the training process. But what's even more more crazy is that a lot of the time the things AIs will say actually make sense. There is still active research into understanding how this emergent reasoning develops through training, but it got me thinking. What if I made a chat GPT of my own, except instead of predicting the next word in a sequence, it predicts the next Bitcoin price? Someone say we could predict as many future candles as we want. If something like patterns really exist, then a neural network will be able to pick up on these patterns in this form of emergent reasoning. So let's get cracking. ChatGPT3 used 70 billion neurons. I can't run 70 billion neurons on my computer, so I'll be making a model that uses 200,000 neurons. And would you look at that? This is the Cat 2 point series I made running on test data. This is data the model has never seen before, and I want you to pay attention to these freeze frames. Frames. Surprisingly, these predictions are not far off. This data was pulled from just a couple days ago from live Bitcoin data, so there's no way the bot has ever seen this data before. It hasn't been trained on it at all, which means we did it! We actually made an AI that learned something useful from the training... Uh, uh, what, what is that? Blows my mind. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, anyway, if you want to see the rest of this video and other models I've made, then check out my Cray for Crypto channel. Seriously, check it out if you like crypto and stock market stuff. But I do want to say, a GPT predictive model isn't the only way of doing AI generation. It happens to be easy, which is why we have all this AI crap floating around right now, but there is technically another type of neural network prediction known as a diffusion model. It gets complicated, but it has to do with refining the same guess over and over again until it's crystal clear and looks good enough. I did not make a diffusion model because holy moly, this was a lot of work already. I will get around to it someday, but for now, I will be releasing the finished Cat 1.3 and 1.4 models on my website. They are not the most spectacular models in existence, and I've already shown you how I made them and what they're capable of. And if you want to mess around with them, go ahead. They are neural networks that learned something from the training process, and I've tried to document a lot of that on the website. 
I've coded up API so that you can interact with the predictions live and the generations roll in from the AI like ChatGPT does. Now, the website is subscription-based because I have to host these models on a server and I have to pay big dollars so that my website doesn't break when hundreds of people are trying to use it all the time. The models are quite big for a web server, which is why I haven't been able to add the other models yet because they're even bigger in size. And the Cat 1.4 model alone has 33 million neurons, so that's large. Large. It's a huge history happening, isn't it? It's bigger than that, Chris. It's large. But later down the road, I will be releasing my two-point and three-point cat models. I just have to get around to coding that. If you want more of my stock market prediction videos, price analysis, crypto research, go over to the Crafer Crypto channel. This Crafer channel will be mainly focused on various programming projects. I have another video coming up for a crazy AI that I made that plays a game to make me money. So if you're into stuff like that, stick around here. But I'll be doing an analysis video real soon on the crypto channel about the determinism of price action and seeing whether you can actually find any probabilities based purely on charts and the order book. And spoiler, I did find some results. You know, and, and there's just so much more I could say about this AI project as a whole. And you know what? I think I'll just keep talking. Oh, talking would you look at that? Awesome. It's already over 10 minutes. We can't be having a video that's too long. What do I look like? <laughs> Videos don't grow on trees. Ooh, look, my next video. It's almost ready. Join my Patreon if you want to support me. It'll help me make these videos full time and then I can quit my job at Walmart. The simulation game I made in my last video is available on there as well, and any of my future projects will go there. I'm actually pretty active on it, so I'll respond to you if you have any questions. Make sure to join the Discord. There are tons of traders and developers on there. We'll be collaborating more in the future, so stick around. And that's all I have, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!